Welcome everybody to Drive Through Sports with Adam and Paul. Today is Wednesday. For me, it's the day before the first day with students, January the 6th, 2020. Uh, Paul Brees is with us from Brentwood, Tennessee. I'm here in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, and uh, got a lot going on today, Brees. We had a, we had a big day, big weekend in sports. Um, and uh, had a big show on uh, Sunday night, kind of recapping the end of week 17 football, uh, getting them all the playoff scenarios together. Um, you know, your boys, the Titans pulled it out, man. And uh, so now they're looking at a home playoff game. And uh, what are you what are you hearing about the number of folks that they're going to be allowed to watch that game? Uh, to be honest with you, uh, that is a good question. I probably need to uh, – they have allowed up to like like the last regular season home game. It was almost like 16,000, but I'm not sure. Uh, obviously, I don't know if they're uh, – lobbying for the Sean Payton-esque type uh, attendance of where he wants to uh, bus in and quarantine 50,000 people for the uh, Saints home playoff game. But, uh, hey, good for him. Good for him. Well, I, th I think you're right. They're probably going to have at least the normal regular season. I wouldn't, I wouldn't see them having less. Um, so there will be – at least a smattering of Titans fans there for, for that game against the Ravens, which, uh, which should be a pretty good one. So let's talk about this, this NFL playoff triple header times two Saturday and Sunday. So the first Saturday, the first Saturday without college football, uh, we are, we're going to now get to just delve in and, and uh, gorge ourselves on some NFL football for two straight days, playoff football starting at one o'clock each day. Um, you know, the, the matchups, and you probably have it in front of you there, um, on each day, I think the Titans are the first game on Sunday. Is that correct? Yeah, the noon. They're the, they're the noon kick. Noon on Sunday. So which game is the first game? Which game is the first game um, on Saturday? Saturday, Bills hey. and Colts. Okay. All right, so let's take a look. Let's take a look at the at the Bills Colts game. Obviously, um, the Bills are super hot right now, and uh, they're kind of everybody's uh, pick right now. Um, and you know, I, I I can't argue with that. I mean, there's Josh Allen's playing so well. He's probably you know behind Rodgers, Mahomes. It's probably been Allen. He's probably in the top three as far as seasons uh, that that have had, been had by quarterbacks. Indianapolis comes in eleven and five, um, good defense, good running game, and a uh, veteran in Philip Rivers that's never really won, never really had much success uh, in the playoffs. Um, I think this is an intriguing matchup. What are you looking for in this game? Uh, I think the uh, I think the Colts are going to try to uh, ground and pound and try to keep uh, Josh Allen and the offense off the field. But uh, man, I tell you what, <clears throat> playing in Buffalo in January is uh, no fun for a team that gets to play inside eight games of the season. <laughs> that that <laughs> but, could be well, tough. And, and, and they're getting then they're allowing fans, from what yeah, I understand. Yeah, not as many as they would like, but you know I. I don't see it as a problem here. I think the Bills and the Bills uh, uh, mafia, as they like to be called, are just yeah. fired up over this team. And, you know, think they have a shot, they can um, make a deep run for sure. Yeah. And uh, as far as, you know, when you're looking at the, if, if you were a betting man, the, the betting line is Bills minus six and a half with a uh, over under of 51 and a half. Um, so I think pending – you know, pending weather, I think you could see that going over fairly, fairly easily. Um, and I can, I think you could definitely probably see the Bills covering that. Um, and I know, I know they, there's one person they don't want at the game. Uh, 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 Cuomo. <laughs> they do not want Cuomo at the game. <laughs> they have made it, they have made it abundantly clear. They do not want Andrew Cuomo attending the Bills game. Yeah. Um, there's a quite a bit of animosity towards him right now, but I think you and I both, I think would pick the bills. If we were picking, we'll go ahead and, 
and uh, and go on out on a limb there, and I say the Bills advance there. the The four forty kickoff on Saturday is uh, is a division rival game: Seahawks and Rams. Rams coming off what I thought was kind of a surprising win with their backup quarterback. You know, we come to find out that now Kyler Murray was about seventy percent really, uh, and I don't, you know, you, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, but you think, you know, would Arizona have been better off just putting their backup in who was hundred percent, you know, because uh, Kyler Murray does most of his damage with his legs and getting out of the pocket, and creating plays on the run. Um, I think that hurt them. So the Rams are in. Um, how much is Jared Goff going to play? That's a big unknown right now. Um, and that may be why the over-under is so low. It's only 42. Um, that is and, very low. Uh, yeah, and the Seahawks are uh, favored by four and a half. Um, they are playing at home, but again, this is a different type of home uh, field. There's not really a true, true home field advantage uh, like we've seen. Who you got in this one? Well, the, uh, part of me wants to take the Rams and the points, right, if I, if I was a wagering person, which I'm not, obviously. Um, but uh, you got to take the uh, Seahawks, veteran-led uh, Russell Wilson, probably going to do just enough to get the Seahawks to win. That's how they do it. They don't go in there and dominate. Uh, I, I see it as like a, um, you know, a, a, a 24-21-esque type game. Yeah, I think it's maybe 24-17, 24-20, something along those lines. Um, and I think it's all – it all depends on Jared Goff. Is he going to be able – I know he's been throwing the ball this week in practice. Uh, I feel like if he's throwing the football after that surgery, he's going to play. Uh, but um, Seattle's defense has been playing a lot better lately. Um, and they're playing at home with a few of their faithful. So I'm going to go with uh, – I'm going to go with the Seahawks on that one. The nightcap – uh, is interesting because it's Tampa Bay TB12 at the Washington football team. Um, remarkable story. I think you could actually have probably, I mean, definitely Alex Smith's winning uh, comeback player of the year. No doubt. Uh, in fact, they should probably rename it the Alex Smith award. Um, and I think you may have the defensive rookie of the year or the overall rookie of the year, Chase Young. Yeah. And you could have a case for Ron Rivera to win coach of the year, considering all he's been through this year um, with his cancer diagnosis. Um, so I'm rooting for Washington on this one. What about you, Bruce? Yeah, definitely a feel good story, right? I mean, I, yeah. I think the skins, I think the statue esque uh, TB 12 is going to be uh, running for his life as fast as a, uh, 43 year old person can do it or however old he is. Uh, Yeah. Chase Young is coming and that dude is a bad, bad man. Yeah. And Uh, and listen, and here's the thing. He's not the only one on that D line. That's bad. That's correct. Kerrigan, Payne. I mean, all those dudes, they can all play. And, uh, and, and, and Tampa has had some issues protecting Brady uh, this year. So, um, yeah, their offense is clicking now. I'm not sure about the status of Mike Evans. Um, that could change things. Uh, but uh, like you said, feel good story. Washington. I feel like if you if you're a betting betting man with Bucks giving up seven and a half, I think you could probably go with Washington to probably cover that. If, if you know if if you were interested in that sort of thing. But um, you know. You know, the, the 11 and five versus the seven and nine, you know, you don't always look at the records, you look at the matchups and Washington's defense and their secondary can handle Tampa's receivers. And especially if you got that defensive front, putting a lot of pressure on Brady, I think it makes their job that much easier. All right. Sunday Ravens and your Titans, both 11 and five. Uh, now they, did they split in the regular season? Uh, they, they, only, they only played the Ravens once. Okay. They're not in the same. Uh, okay. That's right. But here, you know, obviously it's, it's widely known that the, uh, the Titans can score, uh, you know, in any, any uh, offensive series, but they can't stop anybody. I think yeah. the Texans Sunday scored on their last eight drives, whether it was a touchdown <laughs> or a field goal. And so um, it is uh, a concern. 
and the, the Titans fans are concerned. Yeah. And the coaching staff, I'm sure, is concerned. As they should be. Uh, please, if they want to win this game, they've got to somehow assimilate a pass rush to uh, give the secondary a break because our, our D-backs are just not good enough to uh, hold on for four and a half seconds. <laughs> yeah, I mean, literally. Um, it, you know, and, and you're going against Lamar Jackson. He's got something to prove. This could... Which, I, sorry, Adam, but by the way, actually probably benefits the Titans because he's not a great throwing quarterback. Um, and we since we don't get a good pass rush, we don't flush him out of the pocket, and we keep him in that pocket and try to make him make a decision with his, you know, his eyes and his arm. And I think that's where maybe the Titans, you know, in the back of their mind, thinking they may have a shot, you know, that they don't have to bring any extra people. Just contain uh, him. And don't him in run, the don't let right. him run for – if he runs for less than 50 yards, I think the Titans win this game. Yeah, yeah. If you can keep him – like you said, keep him in the pocket, keep him from getting outside, getting those those chunk plays and, you know, converting first downs on like third and eight where he gets loose or something like that and prolonging drives. I think the Titans – I think the Titans can, uh, can win this game, um, especially – if you, as long as you've got Derrick Henry back there, you can keep handing the ball uh, off to him. Um, the uh, the afternoon game on Sunday, Saints Bears. Now the Bears to me are like like two different teams. They they went through. I mean they're eight and eight. They lost six in a row at one point. I think they started out five and one. <laughs> yeah. And you know then they made the quarterback change back to Trubisky and. Um, you know they've got they've got some pieces, man. They've got some. They've got a couple. Montgomery is is good out of the backfield. He can he can run. He can catch out of the backfield. Um, some of their Anthony Miller. Some of their receivers are starting to make plays. Um, their defense is always going to give you a chance. Um, I think I think that I think this one is about turnovers. Uh, if New Orleans doesn't turn the ball over, I think Kamara's back. Uh, Michael Thomas is back. It's at home. Um, I feel like I feel like they can dodge the playoff nightmare uh, or the playoff jinx for at least one game and win this one at home. Uh, I, yeah, I think you're right. Kamara actually probably cannot practice uh, this week, but uh, you know what? As Allen Iverson said, practice, <laughs> practice. Yeah. Uh, I think if the, the guy, yeah, if the guy doesn't know the playbook by now, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's, so, he's, a, he's, the, he's the New Orleans Saints version of Julio Jones. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like the guy's been around, you know, I know he's younger and hasn't been around as long, but you know, Julio Jones doesn't need to practice, and he rarely does Monday through Thursday. Uh, so, anyway, he's kind of the same same deal. He, he'll be fine uh, moving forward. Then a nightcap is the one that people in Ohio have been waiting for for 26 years. Um, the Cleveland Brown, Browns return to the playoffs at 11 and five. Um, I guess they get all their receivers back, but they lose a head coach and a couple position coaches, I believe. Um, yeah. Do you think that's going to influence the outcome of this game? Do I think it will influence? I, I think it could have an effect on the game. I don't know if the outcome is going to be the difference Uh it will be interesting to see uh, who who takes over what's uh, you know the roles that uh, you know and there's a lot of guys on the sideline that we don't really know who does what <laughs> that are standing over there and you're like wait a minute why do they have like 20 coaches there's plenty yeah. of people that can do it but uh, man to, to lose your head coach right uh, the guy That's that tough. the players rally around you know he's the uh, Stefanski's kind of a rah-rah guy. So it'll be interesting to see. Uh, I'm not going to lie. Um, you know, I think – well, I think the Steelers not purposely tanked, you know, not the Philadelphia Eagles style uh, tanked. But, I, I, you know, I think they were okay in the back of their mind saying, you know, we could play the Browns again. I think we're going to be okay if they yeah. been in there. So uh, – yeah. No love lost, obviously, and uh, 
they all hate each other, but the Browns have had no luck when it comes to the Steelers in the playoffs. True. All right. Well, that's our playoff picture broken down uh, for this weekend, wild card weekend. Um, and you just got our winners uh, and losers. All right. It gets us to number two NFL MVP, Reese. Rodgers or Henry? I know you're a little biased. Dude rushed for over 2,000 yards. He's the face of the franchise. Rodgers, 44 touchdowns, like five interceptions or three interceptions or something like that. It's just ridiculous, his numbers. Um, and I think that I, – I think it's Rodgers um, just because his team is a one seed. They're 13-3. and three. Uh, they got and because they're the best team in the NFC, I think that's I think that gets him the MVP. I mean, okay, so it, it, it's interesting uh, that we you know bring this up. Uh, Chris Johnson, CJ Two K, right, yep. was on the uh, our, our afternoon radio show in uh, Nashville today, and he mentioned that you know the MVP what it seems like the NFL does is this is they give the MVP to the quarterback and they give the offensive most valuable player or the player of the year, however they term it to the, to the best, the, the guy that probably should have won it. Right. Yeah. Um, so we, we've seen many times where like Adrian Peterson or, or, or whatever, you know, and the funny thing is when uh, Chris Johnson ran for 2000, you know, he didn't win the MVP. I don't think I, to be honest with you, I don't know if he was in the top three. Yeah, um, it's a quarterback-driven league. I think Peyton, Peyton, Peyton won, yeah, won it. So uh, what was good to see was, uh, you know, the Alabama wide receiver win the Heisman to kind of break that streak of uh, quarterbacks. We're hopefully down here in, in Nashville uh, that Derrick Henry can somehow break the streak. Listen, this guy is unreal, right? He doesn't yeah. play. He doesn't play a lot of third downs. So he's, he's basically cut, you know, a third of his, of, you know, the plays off, you know, he's not a third down back. Uh, he, um, and his yards per carry is ridiculous. So. Yeah. And yards after contact is, is just unbelievable as well. Um, all right. So we're, we, we maybe differ on that. I, I say Rogers because I just feel like that's the way the votes are going to go. Do I, yeah. think, you know, do I think, I mean, obviously I think Derek Henry is a viable candidate and I think he, uh, when you're talking about most valuable, where would the Titans be without him? They'd be yeah. five and they'd be five and eleven. <laughs> is what they'd be. I mean, let's be honest. So, uh, yeah. you know, you know, where would Green Bay be without Aaron Rodgers? They'd be three and thirteen or four and twelve, probably. Oh, you think so, so? Yeah, yeah. Because you can put Jordan Love. How many games is he gonna win? Yeah. Plus, I think that ticked off Aaron Rodgers, and he's like, "Oh, you want you draft a quarterback to replace me? Okay." I'll go win the MVP. So yeah. um, I'll have an MVP year like a uh, few, few have seen. So, all right. Um, so speaking of that Browns Steelers matchup again. So we've had NFL coaches miss games due to COVID because of quarantine. Um, uh, Daryl Bevel in Detroit uh, did, I think, you know, did Saban missed one in caught and once one of the game Alabama games. Right. Yeah. Um, I don't understand with all that we can do virtually, can we not? Can the guy not virtually coach his team? Like, I know yeah. it, it would be a stretch, but I mean, with everything that we've done, um, it, it just seems like the NFL could could make an exception and be like, "Hey, okay, you can have a, a tablet on the sideline. They got all those tablets anyway, and computers <laughs> and stuff, and just hey, just have them on a Zoom or a FaceTime or whatever. You know, I don't know, but." You know, it, it's 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 unfortunate that the guy in what is this his first year? Yeah, in his first year, he takes the Browns to the playoffs for the first time in over a quarter century, and he can't even be on the sidelines to enjoy the fruits of his labor and coach the guys in their first playoff game. I, I just hate it for the guy, um, and I, it seems to me like there's got there would be some way to figure out a solution here. I don't know. What do you think? You know. Other than, you know, somehow virtually doing it, <laughs> I put him in a hazmat suit and, sneak, you know, putting him up in a box, 
obviously there's, you know, very little fans, but I mean, I, I you know, obviously they don't want to, you know, expose him and they don't want to be exposed and, but there's gotta be an empty closet <laughs> somewhere. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, speaking of NFL coaches, there's several vacancies out there. Um, since we talked last, I think uh, the chargers have uh, said adios to, uh, uh, Anthony Lynn. So which, he got, which we predicted on drive through sports. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Um, he just, he just lost too many close games. Uh, I don't know if you know that Adam, let me, let me just Anthony Lynn. He led the Chargers to a 12 and four record in 2018. Okay. Yeah. And then he went five and 11 last year. Now he's seven and nine this year. Okay. But, uh, and they won four straight to close out the season. And talk about a franchise-esque quarterback, Justin Herbert. I mean, this – who would not want to coach this guy? I felt like maybe Anthony Lynn kind of got the got a bad rap, uh, but the, the Chargers are definitely looking that way. And they did it all without um, – uh, who's the uh, running back? Um, Eckler. Oh, how, Yes. Yeah, so I, you know, I mean, shorthanded. Yeah, shorthanded. He, but, and they were in a lot of games, but he, there was, there were mistakes that were made, like at the end of games. <laughs> I think that came back. He made some boneheaded decisions. And I yeah. think at the end, when you're going through the evaluation process, you're like, you did what? What? Why'd you do yeah. that? You know, so I think there was the, uh, I guess the management at San Diego said we want to go in a different direction. All right, so speaking of different direction, we're going to pivot and head to some college football talk to learn about the show tonight. Um, oh. Now, you obviously didn't see this, Paul, okay, but in the Gator Bowl on Saturday, Kentucky, NC State, uh, in the first quarter, Max Duffy, Kentucky's punter, who is from Australia and played Australian rules football, uh, was a winner of the Ray Guy Award last year. Um, he does the whole rugby-style kick, right? Well. In doing his rugby style kick, he had a guy coming right at him. And had he continued on his typical pattern, it would have gotten blocked and he was probably gotten his leg broken. So instead, he does a option ball fake, okay, and then gathers himself and punts the ball. The the video of this is apparently all the rage in Australia right now. It's all anybody can talk about uh, is Max Duffy's juke move that he did on the uh, NC State um, punt return team. So if you get a chance, check that out. Um, it's it, <laughs> it. I mean, normally you think a punter catch kick, right? It's a pretty athletic little move for the guy. Um, and uh, you need to check it out because it's because it's pretty cool. All right. Um, as we hear at, at Drive Through Sports on Twitter, at D Through Sports, um, and our YouTube channel, subscribe to that, Drive Through Sports with Adam and Paul. Um, you know, we like to think we've got some pretty clever tweets every now and then. Um, and, uh, and we do. Um, and sometimes my, my, uh, my daughter will have some tweets and I'll have to, you know, say, hey, you know, you know, that's probably not what you want to be tweeting or not what you want to be retweeting, uh, that sort of thing. Well, we're not the only parents that apparently have to police our kids and their, and their, uh, their tweets or their retweets or their response to tweets. Apparently Nick Saban has to do the same thing. <laughs> and so his daughter, who, what's his daughter's name, Paul? Oh, uh, Oh, darn it. I, I didn't realize we were on the spot here. It's, we're, always, uh, we're always on the spot. <laughs> well, I'll hang on. I'll look it up here. All right. So, so anyway, um, his daughter, uh, who's, who's married, um, posted a tweet stating something along the lines of, you know, hey, you know, don't, don't try and disguise, you know, the fact that you're trying to buy time for your injured quarterback by saying that your team has COVID issues to try and get the national championship game postponed. And, um, 
once uh, Coach Saban got word of that, you know, he all he could think about, oh, great. Now you're giving a team that's already motivated um, to show what they can do like they did against Clemson, against us, and you're giving them more bulletin board material. Take the tweet down. Um, so here's my thing about about Twitter. If you if you have a tweet, like what with screen grabs and everything, what good does it do to take it down? I mean, it was it's been said. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, it's out there. You know, yeah. so, it down is and all these coaches and athletes and kids of coaches and and people. I mean, you tweet stuff. You that's what Twitter's. It's a sounding board. Right. You know that no, there's no experts on there. I mean, yeah, there are experts on there, but I mean, most of it's just people like me and you just mouthing off on Twitter and saying what we think about some stuff. And it's just our opinion. Um, and that's really all it is. Um, it, deleting the tweet and then apologizing for the tweet. I mean, is that even, I mean, I, I just don't see there being any amount of genuineness to that. I mean, you had the brains and the brain function to tweet it. You were obviously thinking it and you obviously think that whatever it is. Um, I don't think apologizing for it and deleting it helps anything. What do you think? Yeah, uh, Twitter's a dangerous game. Uh, if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. <laughs> yeah. But I do I do get that uh, Kristen, um, uh, Nick's daughter, I, I believe married daughter, uh, you know, is basically say, telling, you know, Ohio State, hey, uh, I think this is BS that you're calling COVID cases because – Justin Fields, as you mentioned it earlier today to me, possibly has some – in what your professional opinion, opinion uh, is what? You're calling what, cracked ribs? I mean, I wouldn't – I mean, all you have to do is look at that, that hit, um, right where it was. It was lateral, uh, which is when – you, when you get hit from the side like that, um, obviously the ribs are exposed. There's very little soft tissue – over the ribs to protect them. Yeah, you got padding under there, but but that guy weighed 240 pounds and hit him with hit him with the crown of his helmet right in the ribs. Yeah. And well, and, and stopped Justin, who also weighs about 230 pounds, dead in his tracks and pushed him backwards. So think about the amount of force that was focused right. in an area about this size, because that's the size of the crown of your helmet that came in contact with his ribs. It's yeah. all about force and where that force is applied and how quickly it's applied. And it was you. Everybody that watched it saw it. I was amazed that he came back in the game. Uh, that was that was tough. That was gutsy. It's one of the most gutsy things I've ever seen um, an athlete do. And uh, you know he ha he was hurting. I know he was hurting. Um, so, and I guarantee that they were probably, you know, he probably had a little bit of a, maybe got an injection just so he could maybe uh, dead in that area, make at least make the pain go away. Um, but uh, I guarantee you on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, when today, he's hurting because you continue to play through that and then you continue to aggravate the tissue. And it, and it, the days after that, it's, it hurts because you've done that. So I bet he is extremely sore. And uh, he, he may not have thrown a football since Saturday. Probably. Uh, listen, I, I got to expound on this tweet uh, by Nick Saban's daughter that, you know, at the, at the end, you know, she says, if you're, if you're hurt, put in your backup, you didn't see us postpone the rest of the season to wait for Waddle. Okay. Well, the re uh, we got a little response from her. I, obviously, there were thousands of responses, right? Um, yeah. But uh, Cardell Jones, uh, former Ohio State uh, quarterback, says, you sure you want to face another backup from OSU? You know what happened last time, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, a great response. Um, you know, and that's the and what I would call the fun stuff about Twitter, right? There's a lot it's of the bad things, but that is fun stuff to me. That's the back and forth. Yeah. The jabs, the little sure. jabs, not the, not the, the, the ruthless mean spirited no. stuff. It's those little, it's those little clever, clever jabs that we appreciate. 
Yeah. Um, there are a lot of people on Twitter that are very good at it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You have the sense of humor to understand. Yes, absolutely. Uh, well, some people talk, definitely take it the wrong way. Yeah, and take it too seriously, take it personally. All right, so the whole object of this tweet was the, uh, the postponing of the national championship possibly due to COVID issues. So here's my thing. If if Bama concedes and is like, okay, we'll postpone it until the 18th, well, who's to say that Alabama next Monday at practice is not going to have a guy that gets – you know, you know, if that's the case, then, I mean, we're lucky we got to the end of the season and we have one game left, personally, and that it's actually yeah. on schedule. Um, so who's to say that Alabama wouldn't be in the same situation next week? So I kind of, I think that you got to go with, you know, I mean, how many college teams played multiple people down because of COVID, played games? I mean, Vanderbilt. I mean, how many, how many games they play with like 53 people, 53 scholarship guys? <laughs> you right. know? Now they're not. Or less. I mean, or less. They're not national championship caliber, but still it's the, it's the same. I'm trying to make a point about uh, it's been done. Yeah. You know, it's unfortunate timing that it happened the week of the national championship game. But it's kind of like they asked Aaron Rodgers, um, you know, what's the, what's the most important thing you can tell your teammates going into the bye week? He said, don't get COVID. <laughs> I mean, it's, that's the that's most important thing because the schedule is the, what the schedule is. And, you know, if, if Aaron Rodgers gets COVID in that two weeks in between now and, you know, the divisional round, I mean, you might be looking, I don't know who you're looking at. I mean, is, are you looking at Jordan Love at quarterback? Or do they have some other guy that's got some actual experience? I don't even know who the backup is. So, yeah. Um, every team in the NFL has dealt with it. Pretty much every team in college has dealt with having certain people out. I just, I think you got to keep it at January 11th. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, I know you can't do this, but I would, <laughs> to put pressure on Ohio State, I would, I would jokingly say, if you can't play January 11th, uh, we're going to let Clemson come back and play. <laughs> <laughs> oh obviously that's obviously they can't. Oh yeah. You've got to, you've got to put pressure on Ohio state to play this game. Right. Yeah. I mean, but, but you shouldn't have to put pressure on them to do it. You know what I'm saying? Look, Correct. you got however many, you got 80, what, how many scholarship guys? No. Yeah. 85, 85, you got 85. Hey, well, not all 85 can get on the field. You know, get your best 11 on offense, best 11 on defense. That's what you got to do. Yeah. So, yeah. you know. Um, but anyway, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be a great weekend of sports coming up. Um, and, uh, and I mean, three games in NFL on Saturday, three games in NFL on Sunday, and then the national championship on Monday. It's going to be a great three days of football. I can't wait. Uh, it's going to be exciting. Um, uh, so, Hopefully, hopefully this hopefully this version of Drive Through Sports gets over to Australia, uh, and you guys can take a look at Max Duffy's juke move. Um, as a as a huge Kentucky fan, uh, obviously I'm a big Max Max Duffy fan. But um, Paul, I got nothing. I got nothing else. You got anything you want to end the show with tonight? I I, I want to say, you heard it first. If Urban Meyer goes to the Jaguars, you heard it first a long time ago. Uh, we called it out. Uh, I know we didn't get to talk about it much other than the uh, 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 the uh, coaching move, but Urban Meyer to the Jags. I got Marvin Lewis going to Detroit Lions. Uh -huh. and I got Eric Bieniemy going to the Texans. And uh, uh, last but not least, probably in no man's land, Arthur Smith, the offensive coordinator for the Titans, possibly the New York Jets' uh, next head coach. And nobody wants to coach the Falcons. Uh, I, I will give you a name, but I don't know. All right. Talk Ro to uh, Ro you, want, you want it? Robert Sala, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, he, he interviewed the other day. And, and I think Enemy is, is going to be too expensive. They're not going to pay him.
And He's, Joe Brady to the Chargers. Joe Brady, offensive coordinator for Carolina, LSU, Joe Burrow guy. So there you go. To the Chargers? Really? Wow, that's right. a quick jump. Those are my coaching predictions. I know we didn't get to dwell on it at the first when it was time, but I thought I'd throw it in there at the last second. I like it. I Have a good it. one, guys. All right. For Paul Brees in Brentwood, Tennessee, Adam Freeman here in Atlanta, Georgia, you've been listening to Drive Through Sports with Adam and Paul.